Hi everyone, bonjour tout le monde, it's Timothy here and I'm partnering with the Montreal Chamber Music Festival to share with you the daily life of what it's like to be a classical musician during the COVID-19 pandemic. I've had a long history with this festival as it was one of the first musical organizations to hire me when I was first starting out performing at age 16 and they've been huge supporters of me ever since. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a classical violinist who started playing at age 3 in Victoria, BC, and I spent the last decade studying and living in America. I've built my career with my biggest passion, which is playing the violin, playing music with other musicians, traveling the world, seeing new cultures, and finding new creative ways to get people excited about classical music. Of course, many of these things are not possible, I can't travel outside of the country right now, and I've had to adapt to this new normal. Today I'm going to show you how I work, how I practice, how I record my music videos and edit them, and just what my general thoughts are about the music industry going forwards after the pandemic. Let's get started. I'm going to snap my fingers and it's going to be 8 a.m. Good morning everyone, it's 7.45 a.m. and I'm awake. I just had my phone conversation with my mom. So I'm definitely awake. I just opened my computer just to see what I was doing last night and saw that I was editing this video that I'm going to be publishing in a few days. It's a recording that I did of the Largo from Sonata Number no. 3 in C major by Bach. This morning I'm just going to be adding the manuscript onto the video, which is something that I've been doing recently and seems to be doing really well. It's not the hardest thing to do. It's a bit laborious and repetitive, but this kind of stuff really makes my brain going and makes me feel productive. Actually, the video should be out already if you're watching this, so go ahead and check it out. You can type in Largo, Bach, Timothy Chewy. Enjoy. So I've just finished doing a whole bunch of video editing work and I've decided to go for a walk. This is my form of exercise and I try to do this twice a day for about 30 minutes. Nothing too fancy, just walking across the park. It gets my body warmed up for what I'm going to do next, which is practice the violin. This is also a great time for me to just listen to a whole bunch of recordings of music that I'm working on. Not only does it put me in the right mindset, but it also helps me memorize the pieces a lot quicker as well. Today I'm listening to a recording of Hilary Hahn's Shostakovich Violin Concerto, and it's really impressive. Really fast, full of character, lots of drive, and the orchestra sounds really amazing as well. As you could probably tell, it's a really hot and muggy day outside, so I'm really glad to be back inside. On the way in, I picked up this package that was delivered for me and their violin strings that I ordered a couple of days ago. I'm really excited to have them because the strings that are on my violin are so old. They've been on there for three months and I usually change them once a month, but since I'm not performing so much, I didn't need to change them so often. I used Peter Infeld strings, they're my favorite because once you put them on your violin, they sound great. Some other strings, they take a couple of days before they sound their best, but not these ones. And this is one thing that I've realized is that everything that we have to get in terms of supplies and equipment, we have to order online now before we could go into a shop and just get them. But it's not the worst thing because there are a lot of shops out there that's online and lots of great deals as well. So I've taken a shower and the sun came out, so it's a perfect time to start practicing. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about this instrument. It's a very special one. It's a Stradivarius that was made in 1717, and it's currently on loan to me from the Canada Council for the Arts Musical Instrument Bank. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to have an instrument like this for a couple of years. I've had this one since 2015. This instrument is extremely powerful. It has the ability to project for an audience of 2,000 people with no problem and just really is a beautiful sounding violin. All right, so let's start practicing. Shostakovich Violin Concerto. 
This is one piece that I've always wanted to learn since I was 11 years old. I heard a recording of Sarah Chang playing it with the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra and it was on my iPod. I've always wanted to learn this. I actually went out to buy the sheet music when I was 11 years old. It was really expensive. It was like 60 bucks or something at the time, but I saved up and bought the manuscript for it. Today I'm going to be working on the cadenza of the concerto. It's between the third and fourth movement, probably one of the most demanding cadenzas ever written for the violin concerto repertoire. It's got everything you can imagine, double stops, triple stops, quadruple stops, fast notes, triplets, changing meters, dissonances. I've always wanted to learn this piece ever since I was really young, but I never got the chance to until now, and that was because a lot of my professors didn't allow me to learn this because they believed that I needed to have a certain amount of emotional maturity before um, learning the notes of this piece, even to start with. I feel like now is a good time, as there's a lot of time and space to just look at the score and really study it, learn about the history of Shostakovich. It's, it was a brutal one, but this piece has so much emotion and drive and it's telling me a story. So I've just finished the first section of my practice and I'm taking a break, having a snack, and I'm just reading some news and some emails about how things are happening right now in the classical music industry. And it really got me thinking because I find that right now is a very important time for classical musicians to adapt to the virtual world. In some ways, this has really given each person the individual responsibility to find new ways to share our music online. Now it's time for the fun part of the day, and I'm going to be recording a music video that I'm going to post on my Instagram, Facebook, and my social media. It's kind of like that video that I did earlier in the day. So I finished recording and I think that went really well. I'm really tired and hungry now because I've got to eat something substantial for lunch. But I'm going to treat myself and have some instant ramen, which is my favorite kind of food. I know it's not the healthiest thing, but once in a while I try to treat myself. So let's go make some ramen. <music> That was a really big dinner, so I needed to go for my second walk right now. I'm also listening to some fun music. This is Mongolian folk music. I've always wanted to go to Mongolia, and this is kind of transporting me into that world right now when I can't travel. Check it out. So it's now close to the end of the day, and I'm ready to start my routine before going to bed. Generally, I like to just relax and watch some YouTube videos just to relax my mind and just get myself out of this music world. I really like cooking videos and also airplane documentaries. So I'll probably spend a few hours looking at that. And then I think I'm going to look at the footage that I recorded today just to see that everything is working out. I still have to add the other voices into my video before I can publish it. And then that will take a couple of hours and I'll probably just brush my teeth and fall asleep. Six hours later.
So today happened to be an extremely productive day. I felt very accomplished and it was a very successful day. I got my music video recorded, I got to practice and many other things at the same time, but this isn't always the normal. Some days I just can't focus on both things. I can't do music videos and practice, so I end up choosing one. But I think that might be okay because we need some resting days as well and not every day are we going to be super motivated. But this is a glimpse of what it was like to be me as a classical musician during the pandemic right now. I want to say a huge thank you to the Montreal Chamber Music Festival for supporting us and giving us the opportunity to share this video with the public and I hope to play for you soon.